In round numbers, a third of our energy goes to buildings, a third to industry, and a third to transportation. The actual numbers differ a bit. What's really important, though, is in the use of oil. Uh, our transportation is about 97% oil-fueled, and about 70% of our oil use fuels transportation. So those are the two sectors that are intimately intertwined. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Nissan display. My name is the clean car of the future will not burn gasoline in an internal combustion engine. Now, what will it actually burn? It may not burn any fuel at all. It might be uh, hydrogen used in a fuel cell. It could be an electric car. Um, it could be a plug-in hybrid. It could be a flex fuel vehicle that has ethanol, for example, or another kind of biofuel. Right now, there's an explosion of technologies and a marvelous era of innovation in transportation technologies that we haven't seen in a hundred years. Let's remember that back at the turn of the 20th century, there were more electric cars on the roads of New York than there were gasoline cars. And Henry Ford's Model T ran on ethanol as well as it ran on gasoline. It was a flex fuel car. So we might really be going back to the future. Henry Ford would be appalled at how inefficient that future is. In 1908, his Model T got 25 miles per gallon. 100 years later, the average car today gets 21. A typical car today uses every day 100 times its own weight in ancient plants inefficiently converted to gasoline. What happens to that fuel energy when it goes in your tank? Seven-eighths of it gets lost before it gets to the wheels. Only the last 6% of the fuel energy actually accelerates the car and then heats the brakes when you stop. And yet 95% of the mass you're accelerating is the car, not the driver. Barely 1% of the energy in a gallon of gasoline is used to move the driver in a forward direction. I mean, that's incredibly inefficient. And that's after 100 years, the world's best engineers working on this. What kind of car will the city of the future see? The monster is trundled out onto the highway to frighten other motorists. New sources of power are being developed which may eventually bring the gasoline age to an end. Dream cars of the future have promised many things, even the ability to fly. The first step in getting there is making them way less. I have no question that the future for transportation involves lightweight materials. This has got to be the future, in part because it allows us to have our cake and eat it too. If you have the same car, but it's made from very strong but much lighter materials, you'll use less fuel.